Getting back my way my Hello everybody This is Budridge and this is Thunar Smarter Layout Let's do this Because right now also we need to start Thunar IPC start here we got this now, changing layout, sending uh, X2 tool, control 1, control 2, depending on the layout. So it automatically changes the list and icon view depending on our deed rules. Um, but there are uh, some things that I would like to improve here right away before we uh, proceed in our never ending Thunar customization thing we go have going on. Let's do this. Echo updated to view mm, updated to icon view updated to list view. Just wanted to add this so we can see here now because now if I enter dot directory here we can see updated to list view. I go into a subdirectory here, updated to list view. Go back, updated to list view, updated to icon view. Git directory updated icon view. What I wa wanted to show here is that every time we enter a new directory, the title changes of Thunar. Uh, it will execute this uh, update FM script and it will send this uh, X2 tool keys no matter if the layout is already applied or not. And that's what I want to, to fix in this video to, to have some sort of memory, so to speak, to, to make sure um, we don't send these uh, keystrokes and do other things that we will add later uh, when, we're, when we don't need to. When the rule is already applied, then don't do these things. You know. uh, the method I would like to use here is, um, I have made a little note, um, only update if needed. Get instance name and window ID, uh, compare instance name, change instance name. Yeah. This is a list of all the windows. Here we can see the Thunar window is here. Thunar D is the class name, the title, home slash boot git, file manager, and then we have instance name here. And if you remember, we changed the class name in the first uh, video, I think it was, in this Thunar series, to name it Thunar D. And then i3 uh, looks at that class name and, and put it in the right uh, container here for us, the D container. We can also uh, alter uh, the, the instance name. And that's uh, how I think we, we can... Um, uh, yeah, when we change layout, we also change the instance name to represent which layout we change to. So for instance, if we have, uh, right now the instance name is Thunar. So if we change to icon view, then we can change the instance name to um, Thunar I. And when it's list view, we do Thunar L. And then we can just uh, compare these instance names. I know it might sound like a lot of, of things here and, and that it might bloat our script even further, but trust me, it will not. It, it, it will um, make everything more efficient, actually. Um, because the instance name, you know, we, we ru execute this script from Thunar IPC Python here, which is this i3 subscription script uh, that every time the, the title of Thunar changes, this script gets notified and uh, executes update FM. And it uh, sends the, the, the path to the directory as an argument here. We get that that path is actually the, the title that we uh, format a bit. We remove this this last part, the file manager part from it. We got other things here as well in um, uh, in this IPC uh, listener script. We got the instance name, for instance, and we got the window ID. We got the container ID. We got all kinds of information about the window. Is already stored in inside this event object here. So we don't need to to make any. Uh, search um, scripts or anything. We already got the information we need. 
we just need to, to pass it into update FM here so we can uh, do more tests and stuff. So, uh, and I have already prepared it a bit here. We need the instance name, which is stored here in window instance property. Uh, and we also need the window ID, which is stored in the window property. This uh, CID here, container ID, that's actually the container ID. That's a different thing. We don't really need that now, uh, but window ID, this is also the window ID. That, that's the number that we will get with, with here, except that this is in hexadecimal format. But as you can see here, this is WMCTRL and also x 2 tool is aware about this window ID. Uh, so you can use that to, to sp sp uh, specify a window. Um, so yeah, we got these and then we need to pass these as well into update the fan. But now it's starting to get a bit cluttered here with, with all the things we, we passed to update the fan. So I'm thinking that we should uh, add a get dots uh, in, in update FM as well here to make it easier to, to manage all the different arguments. The arguments we are interested in are uh, instance, uh, window ID, I call that a D, and the path, which is yeah the path that we uh, send to, to parse rules here. Now we can do this uh, and add an option for each of these. We got the I, we got the D, and we got the P. Uh, instance, we can call them this now, and then window ID and path. Maybe not the best argument names, but they will do for now. And then we change this to path. And now we also need to update our Python script here because now we are using command line options here. So we cannot just pass an argument like this. We have to specify which option it belongs to. But uh, you can just add the options like words like this. The path is this. And we also add The instance and we add the window ID and here ins and with that's the variable names here I have given them. So now uh, we also need to reload this and it should work uh, going to uh, dot here and it changes the list view great <clears throat> update the fam now we could also just to echo uh, the current instance name is instance the current instance name is thunar Current instance name is Thunar. Good. So now we need to rename this uh, instance name, and we will do that with Exo Tool because Exo Tool can do everything. You can send keystrokes, you can move the mouse, you can get the mouse position, you can rename class, you can rename instance, you can do all kinds of strange things with it. And the good thing here is that uh, since we are all already using Exo Tool here uh, to send the keystroke. We could just chain in here to change the instance name. We can add that command uh, to the same x to tool command here, so to speak. And that's, that's also good for saving us a couple of, of uh, CPU cycles and whatnot. So if I open x to tools man page here, we can see what we can do. Here we have keyboard commands. It looks like this. That's how to send keys. And then we have mouse command to, to move and, and get mouse position and stuff. But then we also have window commands. And that's what we're gonna do to, to change uh, the instance name. And as you can see, you can do a lot of things with it. Here is the option we need, set window. And what we want to set is the instance name. 
And here, this is a bit weird uh, because instance name in inside X2 tool is, is called class name. So this means instance <laughs> and class is class. So class name is actually instance. Or maybe it's uh, the other way around, but whatever. I just copied uh, that there so we know what we are dealing with. So the command we wanted to send was set window. We can just add that here after uh, we send the key. Options. Options is class name. And the argument to that option is the new class. And then we, the last argument here is window ID. And that's uh, why I added this window ID here uh, variable in, in our get ops that we get from Python IPC. So we, we can be sure that we are setting the right uh, uh, um, windows instance name. So this should work, but now it will set the class name to, to a new class name here. We could actually test it here. So save there and then go back to home directory. You can see the current instance name is Thunar. And then it uh, did send the echo update icon view. It did this after this, you know, and here it, it should also have uh, renamed the, the window now. So we can see it both here. New class name is the instance name now. And if we open a directory dot instance name is new class name. If I go back, instance name is new class name because now we only change it when we change the icon view. And remember, I wanted to call the instance name Thunar dash and then the rule. And the rule is what we got here already. It, it, it will be I in this case and it will be L in this case. We could write it like this. Uh, Thunar dash rule. Now we only need to add this to this one as well. As you can see, we already have uh, very duplicate lines here, and this could uh, be refactored later. So instead of, of this whole thing, we could just whatever. Let's let's do that in another video because now uh, going to dot instance name is new class name but now when we go back instance name is thunar l because it was list view but now it's icon view you know go into git instance name is thunar i uh, updated to icon view go back is thunar i so so now what we got here when i echo the instance is the previous layout and that's exactly what we need you know uh, then we just have to compare what we get here with the rule. If that rule uh, uh, it doesn't match the instance name, then we, we apply a new layout. But if it is the same, same thing, then we don't need to do this case. So we just add a test here. <coughs> we can do an if else to make it clear. If rule is equal to, then let's do this. Uh, instance pound symbol star dash curly bracket then uh, echo uh, 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 layout already applied else echo apply new layout Now we are in icon view here. We go into git directory. Layout already applied. We open a subdirectory here. Bud apply new layout. We open a new sub subdirectory here. Should be the same layout, list view. Layout already applied. We go back, layout already applied. We go back apply new layout so so here we we got it so uh, what we all we need to do now is paste this case into this part of, of the if statement now it will only 
uh, updated to icon view and updated to list view, we should only see that notification when it actually uh, needs to update the, the view. So if I go to home directory here now, layout already apply. We ne never saw this updated to icon view or anything. Open the dot directory, apply, uh, up, apply new layout, update it to list view. Go into a new list view directory here, layout already applied. So now it only sends uh, this control uh, one and control two when it actually needs to. So, so this, is a, this is a big improvement to, to the script already. Uh, and last little uh, touch I wanted to add here is to um, only send keystrokes to Thuner. The, the, this is a thing that can be really hard to, to understand uh, or see uh, what difference this makes. But, but this will prevent, uh, prevent us from getting weird uh, results in the future. Because uh, as it is now, X2 tool here, it sends control one or control two. It just uh, sends those keystrokes, you know, it's like you press control one and control two on the keyboard. And it doesn't care if uh, Thuner is activated or anything. This changing class name, that will always change the right window because we have the window ID. But these keystrokes, they can end up in any application that currently have focus. As it is now, most it will most certainly be Thuner that it has focus when we change directory in it. But you never know, you know. And it's easy. We can just add this window ID uh, to to the key command as well to make sure that that uh, it will it will um, send the keystrokes to the right uh, window, and it will do so if if the window. Uh, would not be uh, active. It would still send the keystrokes there, but without uh, updating the window, which is another nice thing. So we just add this uh, window option with the window ID as an argument here before the actual uh, 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 keys. So now it, we will not see any difference, but but it is even better, smarter, faster, stronger. Thank you for watching everybody. See you in the next video. Have a great day.